Hey there, I'm Cindy Linden, and this is a Cook Along Podcast Quick Bite. As we head into another holiday season, I have a suggestion for something rich and indulgent that also makes a great homemade gift. And here's a bonus. It's easy, it's inexpensive, and whether you are serving it or gifting it, it will be welcomed with bright eyes and big smiles. I'm talking about dolce de leche, which means the sweet of the milk. Dolce de leche is a creamy, sweet, caramel-like sauce, sometimes called Mexican caramel. But while it looks like caramel, it is, in fact, different. Dolce de leche is made by browning a milk and sugar mixture, while actual caramel is made by almost burning sugar in a tiny bit of water and then adding cream and butter. And it may not sound like a big difference, but it means that dulce de leche is sweeter and mellower with a kind of a butterscotch-like or toffee-like flavor rather than the flavor of caramelized sugar, which sometimes can actually have a little tiny bitterness from burning of the sugar. That's not to say it's a bad thing, It takes only one ingredient, which is a can of sweetened condensed milk. And you can make several at a time. You can make like five or six at a time, depending on the size of your pot. And the equipment is a large pot and water. And I put water in the equipment category rather than an ingredient because it isn't an ingredient. It doesn't touch your dulce de leche sauce. My favorite use for dulce de leche. Okay, no. I started to say it was over ice cream as an ice cream sauce. That's not true. (laughs) My favorite way to eat it is just out of the can with a spoon. But my second favorite thing is ice cream sauce. You can also use it as the filling between the layers of a cake. You could experiment with replacing sweetened condensed milk in your various recipes like tres leches cake with the thinner version of dulce de leche. And I'll have more on that in just a moment. You can use it as a topping or a bake-in for brownies. Oh, my God. You can make cookie sandwiches out of it, just like it sounds. Take a couple of maybe shortbread kind of cookies and put a dollop of the dulce de leche in between. Uh, Yeah, good stuff. You can use it as apple dip. Uh, I've seen recipes for caramel pie that use this. It's yummy, yummy in coffee. And like I said... Excellent by the spoonful and a fun and much appreciated homemade holiday gift. So here's how you do this. You get your can or cans of sweetened condensed milk. They're little short 14 ounce cans and you can take the label off. I mean, the label's going to boil off anyway, so it isn't urgent that you do that. But it might make the whole process a little neater if you take the label off first. You put the can or cans in a large pot and you fill the pot with room temperature water to about two inches above the top of the can. Now that means that if you turn the cans on their side, you'll need a little less water because the cans are shorter that direction. And then you set the pot over high heat and you bring it to a simmer. You put a lid on it and you simmer it for two to three and a half hours The cook time depends on how thick and dark you want the dulce de leche to be. So two hours of cook time creates a sort of lighter caramel looking golden creamy dulce de leche that you can pour as a sauce. That's what I like to do. I think otherwise it for me becomes too much like candy and I want to use it in baking. However, If you want it thicker than that, you just cook it a little longer. And for some things, like maybe the cookie sandwiches, you want it a little thicker. For the cake filling, you got to be careful because if it gets too thick, it's going to tear your cake when you try to spread it. In the coffee, I don't think it matters, but it'll dissolve faster if you cook it for the two hours or rather than the three and a half. So the three to three and a half hours, you get a dark brown rich color and it's really thick, almost like putty. You have to sort of scoop it out and it's dense and it's become a solid rather than a liquid. And like I said, that's up to you. It's also a little bit richer in the caramel flavor and it depends on what you want to use it for. 
Now you want to check the pot about every 30 minutes to be sure that the water level stays above the can. And if you need to, you want to add hot water, either water you've boiled in your microwave or the hottest thing you can get out of your tap. Because if the water gets down too far and it doesn't fully submerge the cans anymore, the cans can overheat and explode. So you may find, in fact, on the back of the can that it says never to heat the product in the can. Well, that means don't put it in your microwave. Don't try to heat it on a burner or in the oven or anything like that. Submerging it in water creates the pressure on the outside and takes away the dangers, but you have to keep it covered in the water. Also, just one more caveat, never try to open a can while it's hot because it'll explode on you and it will probably hit your face and this would be very, very bad. So don't do that, okay? If you want the thickest dulce de leche, you let it simmer for its amount of time and then you take the pot off the heat and just leave the cans in the water until it cools to room temperature. That'll make the thickest possible texture, the densest dulce de leche. If you want it thinner and pourable, then at the end of the cooking time, you want to take the cans out of the hot water using a pair of kitchen tongs or a jar grabber and set them on the counter and allow them to cool to room temperature. As it cools, it's still going to firm up, but it's not going to get nearly as candy texture firm as the one that stays in the water to cool because technically you're giving it even longer to heat, right? By leaving it in that hot water as it cools. And then you wanna wait either way until the can is cooled to room temperature before you open it. So probably about four hours at least. You'll be able to tell just by touching it. It'll keep in the can in your refrigerator for a while, kind of a while. If you open the can, you want to get it out of there because the metal will start to corrode and that'll get into the caramel and it just won't be good anymore. So get it out of the can once you've opened it and put it in an airtight container and it'll keep in your refrigerator for at least three weeks. I think it keeps a lot longer than that, but you'll know by tasting it whether it's still okay and still tastes good enough that you want to use it. It's easy enough that if you needed to make more, you could do that quite easily. If you want to gift it to somebody, I recommend that you scoop it out of the can and into a pretty jar. You want like a 16 ounce jar because a 12 ounce jar is too small, unless you want to keep some for yourself and not tell anybody, you know, quality control. Or you can do two eight ounce jars. So they're just little tiny jam jars and put a label on it that says what it is and wrap it up and people will be thrilled. I promise. It is such a cool thing to get. And they don't necessarily even have to know how easy it was for you to make. Can in water. Boil. Cool. Done. They don't have to know that part. That's for you to know. That's my holiday tip, I think, for this year. Of course, a holiday is not required for you to decide to do this. It's useful and yummy all year round. If you want more holiday cooking ideas, I suggest you check out my website, thecookalongpodcast.com. Look under the desserts category, and there you'll find all kinds of subcategories, cookies, pies, sauces, cakes, all kinds of great stuff to play with for the holidays. Since I know some people feel like the holidays are the time of year you get to indulge and set aside some of your healthier trends for the rest of the year. Tune in next week for a full brand new podcast recipe and two weeks from today for another Quick Bite podcast. And until next time, happy cooking.